Ruth Simmons had not yet taken over as president of Brown at that time, but she had recently been named to be president. And uh, I think she watched this with considerable interest. And on her arrival, uh, she spoke, in fact, her very first convocation address, she spoke about this. Brown has a particular ritual with students. It's quite beautiful. There's a set of gates that stand outside of University Hall, so-called college edifice, the original building on campus, a building which we, we discovered was built in part by enslaved labor. And that set of gates uh, is always locked. And a freshman convocation, it opens inward so that the freshman class can process in. And a graduation, it opens outward so the graduating seniors can process out. One example of the way in which universities enact in very concrete ways their identity as communities across time. And uh, so Ruth Simmons actually spoke about this episode, the newspaper episode, in her first convocation address. And she said to the students, it was great. She said if they thought that they had been brought to Brown University to be shielded from ideas that made them uncomfortable, we hadn't closed the gates yet and they couldn't even. Uh, none did. But it reflected her belief that part of what universities do well is precisely to focus on, to prov provoke intense but reasoned and rigorous dialogue about issues that are not well discussed in the wider community. As she said, we need to make of what happened on this campus a teaching moment. So what she elected to do was to create a faculty and student committee which over the course of three years investigated Brown's historical relationship to slavery and the transatlantic slave trade, organized public programs, and all we had over 100 speakers talking about not only slavery and its ramifications, but about the experiences of other institutions and societies from South Africa to Australia that had confronted or failed to confront legacies of historical injustice, to publish a report, to make a set of concrete recommendations about what the institution might do. I'm happy in the conversation or the discussion part of this to talk a little bit about what specifically we found, what specifically we recommended, and what the status of those recommendations is at the present. In closing now, let me just sort of echo something that I think Leslie said very beautifully. But what is the point of these kinds of enterprises? I think none of us here is naive enough to believe that somehow the act of a few universities uncovering the ways in which their history is profoundly entangled with the institution of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. And somehow the scales are going to fall from the eyes of our nation. Racism, as we know it, will come to an end. But what we can do is we can transform the way in which people talk about, understand the past, what they see when they look out at the landscape in which they live. And when we transform the landscape of the imagined past, we also can, I think, transform the matrix of political possibility in the present and the future. To paraphrase Michael Ignatieff's wonderful comment about truth commissions, we may never arrive at the truth, but we can at least narrow the range of permissible lies. Thank you very much.